This is one of the rarest guns in the United States. Probably one of the rarest we've ever featured on the channel. And there's a good chance you probably haven't even heard of it. It's not quite an AK, it's not quite an SKS. What it is, is a Type 81. And I have the distinct privilege of being able to tell you why it's just so damn cool. But first, I haven't even shot this thing yet, so uh, let's play with it. Man, you know it's gotta be really cool when I get excited over a semi-auto. Let's pull this thing apart. What is up, you sexy YouTube mother lovers? This right here is the Chinese Type 81 light machine gun. Well, I mean, technically, this one's semi-auto. Also, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, it is a real treat to have this on the channel because this is excessively rare here in the US. For example, we have featured all sorts of rare stuff here on the channel. I think of myself as pretty well versed in firearms across the board, and this is the first time I have ever laid hands on one of these. So I guess the real question is, what is it? Well, you see, in the mid 20th century, the communist Chinese government really liked the AK platform. They also really liked the SKS. And then potentially as a cost-cutting measure, at one point in the 1970s, somebody took these two rifles and thought, let's make them kith. And then boom, you get the Type 81. Now it's worth noting this is only the one light machine gun configuration of the Type 81. There were several configurations. The Type 81 is technically an assault rifle, but this right here is the LMG variation of it. Unfortunately, this Type 81 is not my gun. It was loaned to the channel by a gentleman by the name of Droove, and he was nice enough to let us play with it and kind of show you guys an example of you know what this gun is and what it does. If you watch this whole video and you decide, you know what, hey, I'm kind of interested in the Type 81, I think I'd like to have one in my collection, uh, I think he's planning on letting go of it fairly soon, so who knows, you might end up seeing it on Gunbroker in the next week or two. But as to what the gun actually is, I know I called it kind of a, a hybrid of the AK and the SKS, and really I can't find a real better way of phrasing that. You definitely have a lot of the same ergos as the AK, and when we take it apart later, you could definitely see the AK inspiration uh, in the internals and also, you know, of course, in the, in the bolt and the two lug uh, rotating bolt system. But it is also short stroke gas operated, just like the SKS. Not only that, but with the charging handles and this cutaway top here, you could also see a little bit more of where it gets its SKS inspiration. So with the Type 81 being a beautiful hybrid of both the AK and the SKS, that drives me to ask one question, which do you prefer? Let me know down in the comments. You know, maybe we'll do an AK versus SKS video one day. But if you're an AK guy, you should definitely go ahead and subscribe. And if you're an SKS guy, you should still subscribe, even though I know you're poor. You know what's funny is that joke used to work. SKS used to be like what you bought, like if you couldn't afford a, a, an AK in the US. Now at the cost of surplus, like a good SKS is the same price as an AK, which is, yeah. Do you remember when SKSs were $150 at Rose's? Pepper Ridge Farm remembers. ADD break. So we know 7.62 by 39 will absolutely punch a white claw. Three, two, one. Something cool about the Type 81 is that while, of course, this is an LMG that is currently in semi-automatic configuration, you still get that longer barrel, which means you get a little bit more energy. So to show that off, we've got three white claws kind of spaced out a little bit, and hopefully we get to see a good visual demonstration of that energy transfer. Your social credit score has hit zero in three, two, one. That'll do it. Ah, yes. Nothing like the smell of White Claw that's been cooking in my hot truck for the last week. <sighs> Beautiful. All right, so now let's do a quick manual of arms, show you how to use the Type 81, and then we'll break it down and show you exactly what makes this an AK-SKS hybrid. But first, I'm gonna show you one of my carry guns. This right here is my Glock 43X. It's a cute little bite-sized 9mm with the Haro-San optic. 
probably made not too far from where the Type 81 was made, on a gun that was made in Austria, no less. But you know what is made in America is the holster that I've been carrying it in. Got this bad boy from We The People holster. It's kind of like a rad, like red carbon fiber look. We The People just moved into a new facility where their big priority is making the best quality products they ever have. I've been using this Kydex holster for my 43X, but they also make leather holsters, belts, shirts, all sorts of stuff. That and they're willing to hook you up with a cool deal if you use the links down in the description and in the pinned comment. So we appreciate We The People holsters for helping keep the lights on and Delance paid. Don't you like that, Delance? Yeah, okay, I thought so. But seriously, they are a big supporter of the channel, so if you want to check them out, use the links in the description in the pinned comment. Tell them I sent you. Back to something actually made in China. So manual of arms, how do you use the Type 81? Well, for one, it's got a trigger here. I kid, I kid. Obviously, we clear all guns before we handle them. That's just kind of rule of firearm safety. Just trying to keep you on your toes. So anyhow, speaking of safety, let's go ahead and flip the gun over because our safety is manipulated with our thumb if you're right-handed. So we've got this little lever here on the left side of the gun or the driver's side, depending on how you'd like to look at it. This little swivel here flips this side for safety and this side for fire. There would be more options. However, the government hates fun. Speaking of the government hating fun, now's a good time to address the elephant in the room if you live in Canada. First off, how does it feel to know that your prime minister is Fidel Castro's son? Secondly, you might be thinking, Brandon, the Type 81 is not rare at all. I, I see these all the time in my gun stores. Why are you treating this like some sort of holy grail? Well, here's where I have to make the painful concession that there is something cool about Canada for once. So ever since the 1990s, it's been illegal to import Chinese rifles to the United States because Bill Clinton was too busy being blown under the desk of the Oval Office to let the rest of us have any fun. However, Chinese imports are still legal in Canada. So you Canadian viewers still have access to all the Norinco rifles and current imports. Ports, as long as it's not AKs, which are, I believe, banned by name in Canada. So, get fucked on. So yeah, there is a bunch of these in Canada as, you know, let's say, uh, AK alternatives. But here in the US, where we, you know, obviously there's no shortage of AKs, we can't actually get Type 81. So for us, these are super rare, and because they're rare and we can't get them, you want what you can't have, and they're pretty sought after. So anyway, moving on, uh, the bipod here is very reminiscent of the RPK-style bipod. All we have to do is squeeze this a little bit and rotate it down, and it deploys like so. To put it away, we just have to do the inverse, squeeze it, and just let it go there in the folded position. Charging handle, very self-explanatory, just like an AK. The sights are kind of interesting, but the rear sight here actually has a rotating knob that uh, adjusts the sight as necessary, corresponding to a near and far sight. So whether you're using the bottom or top notch is where you'll be hitting at one of the two distances listed here. It's a little complicated and that's probably why this didn't stick. But it is a really cool feature and I thought that was worth talking about. The magazine, of course, we have our drum mag because this is the LMG configuration and just looks sexy with the drum. Typical rock and lock, just like an AK. So I just stick that there in the front and it locks into place like so. The YouTube standard of 29 round magazines or in metric, whatever it actually is. Now, even though this may look like an AK drum, because spoiler alert, this is pretty much, this is, this is an AK drum. This is not actually AK magazine compatible. So these are custom made specifically for the Type 81. Now you might be wondering as a cost saving measure, why would you have a, a weapon like this that is so close and in the same caliber as the AK that takes AK magazines, like more or less, like they're very close. Why would you not have it actually AK magazine compatible considering you already manufacture an ass load of those and it's one of the most popular rifle magazines on the planet? Fucking anyway. Now that we've got the longer barrel that is in fact dummy thick and the bipod, I figure we'll go ahead and stretch this out to a little bit of distance. This is like, I mean, it's 100 yards. This isn't really distance distance, but it's not mag dumping into steel that's like 15 yards in front of me. So, you know, I do what I can with what I've got. I will say I am a fan of these iron sights. Makes it very easy to see what you're hitting. Like I don't have an issue obviously with AK irons, but something about the way these iron sights work between this cool rear sight aperture and the hooded front sight, that's just a very clear sight picture. Yeah, see even hitting that small plate's really not all that hard just with irons here. Yeah, that's not, not terribly difficult. Sounds like something joke about communist rifle being used against smaller targets. Anyway, all right, now for disassembly, we start just like the AK. So we push this little uh, recoil spring assembly sticking out in the rear of the dust cover. 
and then pull the dust cover up and out. And we are already looking like an AK on the inside here, but let's go ahead and push this recoil spring assembly forward out of the rear trunnion. Yes. Rich, I did just say trunnion. So we pull our recoil spring assembly out here, pull the bolt carrier to the rear, up and out. And you can already see the massive difference between this and the AK, being that this is not long stroke, so we don't have a big ass piston sticking out of the front like you would on any other AK. But it is still AK in the fact that this bolt right here is straight up just an AK bolt. This, this is an AK. It's a little bit longer. Uh, it's got a little bit longer stem, but that's really nitpicking. Uh, this is just a two lug AK bolt, 100% cut from the same cloth. You put two of them next to each other. It's, it's an AK bolt. Even our cam groove on the bottom here, it's, it's the same picture. So that right there is where you can see the short stroke piston where that comes out of this whole gas tube assembly and it strikes the bolt carrier. The piston rides through the front of the gun, but it is separate from the bolt carrier assembly, just like the SKS. Because if you see on the SKS, you pull the bolt back and we have the same thing right there behind the rear sight. So basically the round goes off when the firing pin struck, fires here in the chamber, bullet goes out the front, but the gas is then bled off through this gas tube, hits this short stroke piston, which then jolts back, hits the bolt carrier, which moves that rearward, ejects the round, and then the recoil spring returns it to the front, loads another round, and you are ready to keep doing that until you essentially run out of ammo. Or polar bears, or what the fuck do they hunt in Canada? The ironic part is, in no small part, guns like this were built by the Chinese to kill Americans like me. Another cool part I did want to talk about is the adjustable gas system here at the front by the gas block. So you see there's a bit of a groove here. So what that's for is for you to take the rear end of a casing on a 7.62 round, and slide it in like so, and kind of wedge it up or down. And that is how you adjust the gas system, which is pretty fucking cool. I like clever design shit like this, and that that's one of the things that trips my trigger. And if you like clever design stuff like this too, I hope you know that if you wanna get your start in weapons design and gunsmithing, you can check out SDI. Edu. Down in the links in the description and the pinned comment, we appreciate them being one of the main sponsors of the channel. Didn't even see it coming. Anyhow, we've got our different gas settings here. We've got two, zero, and one. I've had it set to gas setting one for the duration of the shooting parts of this video, but it is cool that from the factory, you do have those options. So anyhow, reassembling, you put your bolt all the way forward in your bolt carrier like so. Slammer forward, put your recoil spring in the rear of the bolt carrier like so. Push it in and into the little track in the rear trunnion there. You take your dust cover, stick it on like so. We are so back. Man, what an absolute treat it is to be able to film with this gun. Thanks again to the owner for allowing us to take a quick crack at this before he put it up for sale. It was really cool to give you guys the opportunity to uh, kind of get familiar with it. And I don't know why these things, why we think they're so cool anyway. You know what, one more. All right, now, now I'm done. Seriously guys, I hope you uh, enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Thanks again to uh, Matt from Demolition Ranch for totally consensually allowing us to use his range again. Hashtag don't tell Matt. I'm gonna go home and clean this so I'm not a fucking dick. I appreciate you guys watching to the end and as always, I will see you sexy YouTube mother lovers in the next video. Thanks. It's not quite an AR, or not AR, excuse me. It's definitely not an AR. ADD break. Oh. <laughs>